Sabah hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is about the OnePlus 6 and the brand new Android Pie open beta that we have. Uh, the main difference here is that we're no longer in developer preview, we're getting more features, and I'm gonna walk you through the process on how to basically go from the developer preview version that we had before to the new open beta for OnePlus. This is TK, let's check it out. Currently, I'm still running the developer preview version of Android Pie on the OnePlus. Now I'm going to be changing from the developer preview to the beta, and I'm going to walk you through the process on how to do this if you're in the same situation. Uh, this also could apply to you if you're coming from a standard or a regular build of Oreo all the way over to the, the beta that we have right now. Uh, keep in mind, you do not need to be unlocked. These are basically uh, stock firmwares coming directly from OnePlus. Uh, we will be using the stock recovery, so no need for twerp or anything like that. So if you're running from a stock device, this should be pretty much the way you want to do it. Uh, the main thing you want to do is I'll give you guys a link in the description below. Download that file, which will be basically the full version of the beta or the open beta. And then we'll go under system. And then what we need to do is go under basically system update. So we'll go here at the bottom system update. You'll notice it's going to tell me that there is no update. This is basically what I have running on it. What we'll do is on that little gear on the top, well, right under basically it says auto download Wi-Fi. This says local update. And I put the file on the root of my directory here within the built-in storage. So as long as you put it there, it's easy to find. Otherwise, it doesn't locate it. Uh, the file that I'm looking for here is the middle one that we had that I downloaded. It was downloaded on September 4th. And that's going to be the full update that's going to take me from the developer preview all the way to the beta. And we'll need to do a reset after that. Uh, selecting it, just ask me, do I really want to install it? I'll say install now. I'll give it a second. It's going to go through and say system update is installing. And it's going to download and go through the process as if I just received an OTA. So let's get that uh, going and we'll get back to it once it's done. Now that the installation is done, we're going to go ahead and reboot. And while we're rebooting, we're going to hold volume down and allow it to go back into the recovery. Felt that vibration. Once in the recovery, select your language of choice, go under wipe data, and then go erase everything. And then say yes, this can uh, be undone. Uh, this basically just confirms or makes it simple for us so that we don't have any issues with compatibility. Again, I know of people that have skipped this step and they have done really well with the new version, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to be going through this uh, as at this point on this one, I've already backed up all my information. This device is basically brand new. Uh, you'll notice there's nothing running in the recent app. The toggles and all the buttons are pretty much in the way you're expecting them to be. This is intended to be basically the first beta, meaning definitely less issues, but definitely some issues still present. Uh, you'll notice the theme is still set up as white. Let's go ahead and re change that real quick. Let's go under display. If I'm not mistaken, right there, theme. And we're going to go ahead and turn it on to the dark theme. Um, I just find I like the theme. It just works better when it's dark. I don't know why they always turn on the, uh, the white one by default. So as far as categories, we do Wi-Fi and internet, Bluetooth device connection, the display, of course. We have the, that was where we were. So we have sleep, night mode, reading mode, screen calibration, of course, notch display. If you want to basically hide the notch or keep it, you still have the ability of doing that. App display in full screen, ambient display, of course, when you lift it up. This is not an always on display, although if you do have root, there's a method of turning this on. Uh, not on Android Pie yet, but at least with Oreo. Uh, wallpaper, the theme is what we just did. Accent colors, I have it set to blue and you can definitely customize that. Of course, blinking the LED, LED notification, font size, all of that good stuff. Uh, status bar and screen. Uh, as far as actual applications and notification, let's see here, that's, yeah, it's normal stuff. Sound, buttons and gestures where it's getting a little bit different. So the alert slider, you can customize some of those options there. And of course we have quick gestures. Those are for the off screen gestures. I didn't turn any of them on, but you have the way of using these thing when the screen is off to initiate certain functions like turning on the camera or opening a specific app. Uh, of course, we have quick turn uh, turn on for the camera and long press to take photo, but the gestures and gesture bar or navigation bar and gestures is where I wanna be. So we have the way of customizing this setup right now. By default, it comes with back home and recent, the standard um, Android uh, usage, although we may be using losing this in the near future. Uh, you can go in there if you'd like, turn it on, or you can go to the standard, basically the closest that we can get to the way the Pixel devices have it. And that's using that little pill at the bottom. Now, navigation gestures is what you're normally used to seeing with OnePlus devices. So this is basically where you normally just swipe up and hold in the middle to get to recents, uh, or you can just swipe up and go back home. This is just standard. If you used it on any previous builds, this is not any different. Gonna, that's not going to be any different to you guys. 
Going over to the back pill, this is basically where we have a very similar UI to what we have on the Pixel devices. And the reason I say this is, is I can actually swipe in the middle and it gets me directly in here. I can, of course, have, if I had more applications, this would make more sense. So let's go ahead and do this. So you can see here, uh, I can swipe between the two different applications. I can clear both of the applications in one button. Uh, of course, the app drawer is still present and we do still have, if I'm not mistaken, let's go ahead and see if I can bring it, uh, private apps. So if you have private space set up, you can definitely use it there. Um, other than that, you do have that little back button. So whenever I'm in an application, I can see the back button option here and that takes me home. Uh, I also, if I'm not mistaken, we should be able to turn off auto rotation. And let's go ahead and open up the, uh, the app right here. And if I turn the device to the side, you'll notice there's a little option right here, which gives me the option of letting the UI turn. And if I turn it back on again, that takes me back. So definitely really nice. Um, and this is very close. Now, it does not open up the app drawer. The app drawer is still going to be triggered off by swiping from the top above it slightly. If you swipe from the bottom all the way to the top, you're not getting the app drawer. Uh, swiping halfway again gives us access to it. We have the three dot, we can lock it, go to full screen mode, split screen, of course, app information, which is typical. And then split screen just takes you here and recommends you to open another application. Fortunately, it cannot be the same application that you were using before. So let's go ahead and open up Chrome. And here it is. Uh, you can basically resize or bring it down. So one thing you'll notice right here with the volume rocker is sitting on the left side. And I can configure this and go in if there's any media output options that I'm able to cast to it. Of course, I can bring it down. And if I click it, I could just basically mute it right here. Power button, screenshot, and restart are all sitting there. So the installation process, as I showed you guys, is very simple. Just apply this as an OTA and then do a wipe. Um, if you don't do a wipe, I've heard some people that did not have any issues with that, so you could try it. But if you do end up having issues, you know how to fix it. Just reboot, volume down, hold the power, get into the recovery, and then do that wipe. Uh, this is basically a really good build. It should be daily driver ready now. We're in beta, which means we're very close to a final release. We're no longer in the developer preview. Now, I'm really thinking that this is probably going to be around when Google announces the Pixel 3 XL, as most of the manufacturers that have a developer preview have not gone full version of Android Pie like Google did on any of their devices. So I'm assuming that's the timing between those. This basically the releasing it. And the fact that we're in beta just tells us we're getting closer. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you guys think of this video. Like and subscribe as usual. The OnePlus 6 just keeps getting better, man. Every day, every day we get something new. I'll see you guys in the next video.